This is Mrs. Reichelt, and we are moving on in our chapter six um, muscular system, but right now we're going to talk about microscopic anatomy. I know that the microscopic stuff is your absolute favorite thing to talk about, so we're going to just go ahead and give you more of that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. The sarcolemma, sarco means what? Flesh, and remember if you ha if you see these terms, especially on something like a final exam, if it says sarcolemma or myo, whoops, I'm messing up here. You see myo also means that you're part of the muscular system. So um, sarcolemma is a specialized plasma membrane. Okay, I know you love terminology. So plasma membrane, when you're talking about skeletal muscle, is now going to be the sarcolemma. Myofibrils are long organelles that are inside of a muscle cell. What's the other word that you can use instead of muscle cell? Muscle fibers. Okay, so you can use fibers. So remember you have your muscle fiber, which the muscle fiber is going to be surrounded by the endomysium. Hopefully you're following right along with me. Okay, so if it's surrounded by endomysium inside, and I guess this plasma membrane of this fiber would be the sarcolemma, okay? And then within each of these um, fibers, you have these elongated organelles called myofibrils, okay? So a, fi a myofibril is even smaller than a fiber. And then lastly, we have the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is a specialized smooth endoplasmic reticulum and it has a couple of specific functions. The first is that it's going to store and release calcium. Okay, so it stores and releases calcium and what's important to know about calcium is that calcium is sort of like the go signal for contraction. So muscles contract based on um, the based on calcium, really. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep going. Okay, so let's go even smaller than the myofibril. I know you just love talking about small stuff that you can't see, but this stuff is actually pretty cool. Um, so myofibrils are aligned to to give distinct bands. You have two different bands. The first is the I band. The I band is known as the light band. Then the second type is the A band, and the A band is the dark band. So you do need to know that I, the I band is light, the A band is dark, but here's a little hint for you. The I band, the second letter is an I, of light, so light is the, the I, and then the second letter in the dark band is A, so it's the A band, okay? So the I band contains only thin filaments, okay? Thin filaments are also called actin filaments, okay? So thin filaments are actin filaments, and we'll look at um, what those look like in our next diagram. And then there's also an area of the I band called the Z disc that contains a dark area. So it's kind of confusing. So within the light band, you have a dark area. Same thing within the dark band, you have a light area. So it's kind of weird, but you just have to memorize those. Um, so let's go ahead and go into the A band. The A band contains the entire length of thick filaments. Thick filaments are also called myosin. You can use thin filaments and actin interchangeably, and you can use thick filaments and myosin interchangeably as well. Okay, then you have something called the H zone. The H zone is a lighter area of the A band, but it's also called the bear zone. Okay, so the H zone is the light spot of the A band. Then the M line is the center of the H zone and it contains tiny proteins that hold adjacent filaments together. So I think this might be really confusing right now, but I think once we go to our diagram, it'll look a little bit better here. Okay, so on our next slide here, we have 
a picture of or a diagram of a muscle fiber or a muscle cell. Okay, so this whole thing is one muscle fiber. Within each of those muscle fibers, you have myofibrils. Okay, and then within those, you have the sarcolemma, which is the plasma membrane, which is that entire outer area of the fiber. And then hopefully you can see that within this fiber, you can see darker regions and lighter regions. So hopefully you can see that you have darker pink with some lighter, more fleshy color pink. Okay, this is what gives us the A band and the I band. We're going to go even smaller now. So our next slide is going to be a diagram of what the myofibril looks like. So we're going even smaller. Okay, so now we have one my myofibril or a fibril and it's divided up so you can see just this. So we have the actin or the thin filament, which we already talked about. Hopefully it's really obvious when you look at diagrams like this what the difference is between a thin filament and a thick filament. The thin filaments are going to be in purple, so all of these little purple lines are the thin filaments. The thick filaments or the myosin filament are going to be these darker, thicker red lines. Okay, so you see, I'm going to actually erase that. I don't want to have my writing ruin that there. Okay, so the actin is going to be in purple. The thick filaments or the myosin are those long red lines. Okay, so collectively, if we break each of these up, we can see that this band is lighter in color than this band. So that's how we get the I band and the A band. So remember within the I band, we have this structure called the Z disc. Do you remember what the Z disc was? Good, hopefully you're telling me the Z disc is going to be the darker area of the I band. And then the H zone again is going to be the midline Okay, so we're in the middle of the A band and it's going to be a lighter area. Okay, so I think that hopefully makes it look a little bit um, more clear. Um, also, I guess we can go through the M line. The M line is going to be the center line. I kind of wrote over it so you can't really see it, but you see how there are three of those little lines? The M line is going to be that very center one. Okay. So hopefully that makes that a little bit easier to see. Moving right along here. So we're going to go through some more terminology. So that picture that you saw last slide was a sarcomere. A sarcomere is the contractile unit of a muscle fiber. So the organization of the sarcomere is that it's a myofilament, but it contains thick filaments which are myosin, and thin filaments, which are actin. So that diagram that you saw that has, no, I'm not going to be able to draw it, <laughs> but when you have the thick filaments that are intertwined with the thin filaments, one segment of that is called the sarcomere. That's the contractile unit of the muscle fiber. Thick filaments or myosin filaments are composed of the protein myosin. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. The myosin filaments are composed of a protein called myosin. Okay, it also has ATPase enzymes, which we actually are going to do this big class activity, so you'll be able to see what those are. Um, and then the myosin filaments have extensions on them, which are called cross bridges. Okay, these cross bridges are going to link thick and thin filaments during contraction. I'm going to show you a picture of what that looks like, so don't worry about it right now if when you're writing this down it makes no sense. Okay, um, and then the myosin and actin overlap. Thin filaments are called actin filaments and they're composed of the protein actin. Makes sense. I don't think this is earth shattering information here. 
and then they're anchored. So thin filaments are anchored to that structure called the Z disc or that darker area of the I band. Okay, so I'm going to show you a picture of what this really looks like. So our last diagram that you saw, it was little lines. Now we're, these are just really just more detailed. So we have our actin or our thin filaments, which really look like these, um, they sort of look like corded telephones, the old telephones that had cords on them. Okay, the myosin are these thicker structures. And do you see how they have these little heads? They kind of remind me of straw or um, wheat before you harvest it. Okay, they have all of these little heads that are sticking out. The purpose of those little heads is that they're going to kind of hook on to these actin filaments and they get slid past each other to help um, for a contraction. So this is a diagram of a sarcomere. Okay, so here is, up here, you can see that everything is set up just like the last slide. So you have your I band, you have your A band, you have the H zone, which is that lighter region of the A band. And then you have the Z disc, which is the darker region of the I band. And you can see that each of, none of these actin filaments have crossed over. Each of them are separated from each other. But then if you look down here to the second diagram, you'll notice that each of these actin filaments, they're now overlapping each other, okay? That means that this picture or this diagram is showing a picture of a relaxed sarcomere. This is what it will look like when they are contracted. So you're going to see several questions about whether um, a contracted sarcomere is technically contracted or if it just looks smaller because if you see none of these are actually smaller in size the actin filaments are still the same length so contracted is sort of a misleading word because really these filaments are just sliding past each other they're not actually getting smaller